vastness of the night sky reminds me of the desert. Once upon a time, the Jewish people looked out into the desert and saw our future. Now, we look to the stars. My name is Kfir Damari, and six years ago, together with two friends, Yariv Bash and Yonatan Weintraub, uh, we sat down, and over a, a course of a few drinks, we started a space exploration organization called Space IL. <laughs> Our mission is for Israel, a tiny nation of 8 million, to join the United States, the former Soviet Union, and China as just the fourth nation ever to soft land an unmanned vehicle on the moon. We are leading the Google Lunar X-Rise competition, a 21st century space race. The rules of the competition are simple. A privately funded team must land on the moon, move 500 meters, and transmit back to Earth high-definition videos and images. In the beginning, 33 teams entered. Now, only five remains. In a true Israeli fashion, we were the last team to register into the competition. <laughs> and in a true Israeli fashion, we moved from a scrappy startup to the front of the pack. In the coming year, a SpaceX rocket will launch carrying our lunar lander, and with it, the dreams and hopes of a nation. Space AL started as three engineers with a crazy idea. But from early on, we realized it represents something much bigger to the state of Israel. Space AL aims to inspire the next generation of scientists and engineers. That is why we are the only educational nonprofit in the competition. Landing Space AL spacecraft on the moon won't just be an incredible achievement for Israel. It is an opportunity to show the world that it's possible to conduct scientific space exploration with a fraction of the cost, and also to spark our very own Apollo effect. <laughs> if and, and when we win, the $20 million prize will go toward uh, science and technology, educational programs in Israel. And in partnership with the ministry, uh, uh, in, with the gov Israeli government, we are already piloting educational curriculums and doing lectures across the country. <laughs> I love traveling and talk about our work with kids. When I talk about uh, our mission, uh, they ask me all kinds of, question, kind of questions. The best question is when they ask me if the spacecraft is going to come back. And I tell them, no, it's your job. It's their job to build a spacecraft that will bring ours back. And then I ask them to join our mission, to join the journey. I ask to take a picture of them, and I tell them uh, that this picture will go on the actual spacecraft. And that picture means that you are now passengers in the Israeli journey to the moon. Now, today, I want to ask all of you to join. So uh, if, if we may, let's bring up the lights for a second. I'm going to take a panoramic image. We're actually going to count down from five and then say to the moon. Are you ready? Starting. Five, four, three, two, one. To the moon. Welcome. When I tell kids about our outer space and our work, their eyes light up. Every time they smile, I think about my children. It reminds me how important our mission to Israel's future. Throughout our history, from the Zionist pioneers who made the desert bloom, to the engineers who built the Iron Dome, Israel's survival has always depended on innovators and dreamers. We are a nation that lives under constant threat. 
Time and again, we've overcome impossible odds with a combination of resourcefulness, inventiveness, and old-fashioned chutzpah. Israel needs a moonshot. We need to believe that when we dream together, no challenge is too great. At Space AL, that spirit animates our mission. It starts with the moon, but it doesn't end there. So as long as there are unexplored frontiers and eyes to spark, Space AL will continue our mission to inspire. Because when you are Israeli, when the very existence of your homeland feels like an impossible dream, nothing is out of reach. Thank you. Thank you.